All right, today we're going to look at intermolecular forces and specifically what that has to do with boiling points. First, we need to know what an intermolecular force is. Well, here you can see a group of water molecules, and we're going to look at this picture a lot. And I've got five water molecules. And there's an arrow here that says this region between the molecules is called an intermolecular force. So let's just break down the word part by part. An intermolecular force is a between molecule force. Intermolecular forces. Inter means between molecule forces. The forces between the molecules, the stuff that holds them close to each other. Biggest thing you need to know about an intermolecular force, it is not a bond. Okay? Not a bond. It is just an attraction. So here's my water molecule. If I have an oxygen, it's bonded to two hydrogens. There's an attraction to this other oxygen in this water molecule. That's a force, but it's not a bond. Okay? So it keeps the molecules close together and there's just an attraction between molecules. We call it intermolecular forces. Okay. So let's talk about what happens when something boils. When you boil it, it turns from a liquid into a gas. And literally what's happening is the molecules are spreading out. They're getting farther apart because gas molecules are really far apart. So if we were to take these five molecules, and let's say this is a liquid, and we were to spread them out into a gas, these five molecules would be a lot farther apart. And this force in between them, it'd be a, a larger distance between the molecules, so there'd be a weaker force in between them, right? So in order to spread them out, we need to break this force right here. In order to make it boil, we need to overcome, break the intermolecular forces so the molecules can spread out. If you can break that force, you can get it to boil. So the boiling point the temperature that it boils at is related to how strong this intermolecular force is. If it has a high boiling point, it's, the intermolecular forces are really strong because it takes a lot of heat to overcome them. If it has a really low boiling point, the intermolecular forces are really weak because they're really easy to overcome. Just a little bit of heat will um, break the force and the molecules can separate and spread out. Here's an example of water. Water boils at 100 degrees, ethanol at 78. Water boils at a higher temperature because it has stronger intermolecular forces. Ethanol boils at 78 degrees and compared to water it has weak intermolecular forces. Or weaker, weaker than water. It's easier to break these molecules apart than it is these molecules. And because of that, water is going to boil at a higher temperature. It'll turn into a gas later. So that's kind of the basic definition of what an intermolecular force is and how it relates to boiling. There's two rules we need to know when it comes to alkanes. First rule, if we have a straight chained alkane, the more carbons that are in the chain, if the number of carbons goes up, the boiling point goes up. More carbons, higher boiling point. Why? The answer, the explanation, has to do with the intermolecular forces. Okay? The intermolecular forces, everywhere the molecules can touch each other, two different molecules, you'll get an intermolecular force. Methane, which has one carbon, they only touch in one spot. Pentane has five carbons. Methane is one carbon. Pentane is five carbons. Pentane is five carbons, and it's a straight chain. They can line up all along this line. So they're touching in all of these spots. There's more surface area where the two molecules can touch each other. So if they're closer together, they have higher intermolecular forces, and you can look. Methane is negative 161 degrees. 
pentane is 36 degrees. So this has more surface area where the molecules can get closer together, the intermolecular forces are stronger, and the boiling point's higher. So the closer the molecules can get, the stronger the intermolecular forces. That's rule number one. The second rule has to do with branches. That's straight carbons. Okay, So more carbons, higher boiling point, if they're straight chains. If we have branches, uh, and we have isomers, so they have the same formula, the more branches, the lower boiling point that we'll have. Why? Same thing. How close can the molecules get? Everywhere they touch, there's an intermolecular force. So here's pentane again, uh, C5H12. And they touch all along this line. They can get really close together, and there's intermolecular forces all in there. 2,2-dimethylpropane, well, the branches kind of hinder it. They don't, they don't let the molecules get closer together. Remember, closer equals higher intermolecular forces, intermolecular forces. So these molecules, because of the branches, they can't get very close together, and the intermolecular forces are weaker than pentane, Notice also, this is C5H12. Same number of atoms, different arrangement. That's what an isomer is. And we have a boiling point of 36 degrees because there's a lot of intermolecular forces here. And with the branch, it's only 9.5 degrees. So this one's lower than this one because of the branches. So the two rules. Straight chains, the more carbons, the higher the boiling point. And then the more branches, branches go up, the boiling point goes down. It'll boil at a lower temperature. There it is, real quick, real simple.